Um, I simply want to uh, welcome you. Uh, most of you were with us yesterday, and I think all of you agree that we had an absolutely splendid first day. Uh, we look forward to an equally rewarding uh, day two today. Not all of you were able to be with us last night, and though probably the word has pretty well gotten out by now, in case you didn't hear, simply wanted to let you know that the first uh, awardee of the Robert Scalapino uh, Prize is Mike Lampton. Uh, this award is, has been created by uh, the National Asia Research Program as a way to recognize Professor Scalapino's uh, many, many decades of service um, to promoting a better understanding of Asia. Uh, he has acted as a mentor to many of us here in this room. Um, and we felt, the selection committee felt, uh, that Mike Lampton uh, was the perfect first awardee. Um, so that's terrific news for all of us. Uh, Mike is elsewhere in this building this morning, but not here right at the moment. But when you see Mike, you certainly might want to congratulate him. Uh, I, in just a minute, I'm going to uh, turn things over to Dick Samuels, who will open the first panel. Uh, Dick, as you know, is the Ford International Professor of Political Science uh, and Director of the Center for International Studies at MIT. Uh, before we move to uh, the first panel, however, I'd like to uh, ask my colleague, uh, Rich Ellings, uh, to come up just to make a quick announcement. Well, thank you very much for coming again this morning. Yeah, well, I think we had uh, close to 400 people to start us off yesterday, and I know the panels were well attended. We look forward to all that again today. Um, I basically want to thank, first of all, uh, Bob Hathaway, uh, the Woodrow Wilson Center, Lee Hamilton, for being the most spectacular partners. You know, we're trying, we have quite a mission here. We're trying to do a lot and establish a permanent program, something we think will be one of the major programs in the field um, and be a, a, a permanent feature, as I said. So this is a big deal. We're trying to do everything we can, and there is no convening place, venue, and institution like the Woodrow Wilson Center for what we're trying to do and, uh, and their enthusiasm and support, the support of Congress uh, are just absolutely critical to the success of this. And so my heartfelt thanks to Bob, uh, to Lee, uh, to the Woodrow Wilson Center staff, um, and so many others. Of course, on my own staff, I've got uh, Michael Wells. I don't think many of them are here. I see Melissa Colonna, who's worked really hard on this from day one. Um, but Michael Wells, Stephanie Renzi, Ste Stephanie's right there. Uh, these people have worked night and day um, for months and months. Actually, this, the planning for this started a couple of years ago. So in any case, my thanks to all, but again, especially to the Woodrow Wilson Center and Bob and and I think now it's just uh, my turn to turn this over to Dick. Is that right? Uh, Professor Richard Samuels. Thanks very much, Rich. Is this, uh, it's on. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, since this is uh, a panel on, on the, the international implications of domestic uh, political transitions, and since uh, we learned yesterday uh, from both Rich uh, and from Bob Scalapino that this event is Berkeley themed, uh, I thought I'd better begin by invoking uh, Ken Waltz. Um, everyone uh, here who's studied uh, international relations knows his canonical three images, the levels of analysis that have uh, become standard ordering factors in the study uh, of world politics. Uh, I'm going to try not to be pedantic. I, it's hard. My students will tell you. Uh, but bear with me. I just want to frame this, uh, this panel. I mean, his first, his first level explains international politics as a result of leaders' choices. His second focuses on what we're focusing on here, which is the domestic politics, uh, how the domestic politics of states uh, contributes uh, to the shaping and, in some cases, the driving uh, of world affairs. The third, the one that he focused most on, of course, was structural, the ways in which shifts in the balance of power in a context of, of uh, autarky at the global level st shapes uh, states' behavior. But analysts um, who are less comfortable in, in privileging structural factors, which would be, I think, most, 
uh, analysts have been pulling and tugging on, on Waltz's model uh, ever since. Uh, some have insisted that we start by understanding uh, how leaders matter, by understanding that the, the, the question is, and we wonder, you know, can we even begin to explain world politics uh, without explaining the motives or the strategies or the psychology uh, uh, of individuals like Hitler or Churchill or Mao or Kim Il-sung or Yoshida uh, Shigeru. Uh, others uh, insist that it's Waltz's second image, this domestic factor that we'll be focused on today that matters most. Here we're focused on then uh, how shifts in the relative power of states and leadership choices are themselves always mediated uh, through the institutions and the behavior within uh, the domestic politics. So it's about regime type and it's about the nature of civil military relations and it's about bureaucratic politics. It's about a party system. It's about the differences of preferences or even identities. Uh, within states, the character of the, of the bureaucracy. All of these are, are features that, that shape foreign policy and therefore uh, affect uh, international affairs. We even have theories of diversionary war uh, that suggest that foreign adventures uh, can be the product uh, of uh, efforts to deflect domestic pressures. So this is where uh, we are today, not diversionary war necessarily, but at the domestic uh, level. It's the research tradition that informs uh, the panel uh, itself. And it seems to me there's probably no better time, uh, uh, no better moment to consider the effects of domestic politics, uh, uh, and uh, in particular the effects of domestic political transitions uh, on Asian and, and world affairs. Um, after all, virtually every state uh, in, in Asia, and certainly in East Asia, has undergone or soon is expected to undergo a significant transformation, if not outright uh, regime shifts. So let's consider a few factoids by way of framing this thing, uh, things that we should expect to hear uh, from the panel. Last year, uh, for example, Japanese voters repudiated more than half a century of single party dominance by the LDP. They gave uh, the opposition Democratic Party of Japan an overwhelming mandate. And the DPJ, will remember, ran uh, on a platform of thoroughgoing change that, it, that included, it didn't focus uh, primarily on, but certainly included, ending uh, Tokyo's subordination uh, to Washington in an effort to find uh, more equality uh, in the relationship. And for the next nine months, of course, we, we all have been watching how the health of the alliance was under constant observation. In the Republic of Korea, the election of Lee Myung-bak uh, in 2008 led to a shift uh, in, in South Korean policy, both toward the north, uh, but also uh, toward uh, Washington, uh, with, with which uh, relations warmed uh, considerably. In North Korea, um, a lot of attention, uh, justifiably, has been focused on the Kim dynasty and in particular uh, on prospects for regime change. Some await the, uh, the, the anointment of the princeling, uh, Kim Jong-un, uh, while others uh, focus on last year's misstep on currency revaluation. For them, it suggests or at least raises hopes, perhaps, that the dynasty's days uh, are numbered. Um, there's speculation even that the recent uh, Cheonan incident, the sinking uh, of a South Korean naval vessel, uh, may best be studied as an as a, as a example of diversionary war. Uh, and of course, uh, the democratic transitions over the past decades in South Korea, in Taiwan, in Indonesia, and elsewhere in the region have had considerable impact uh, on the nature of cross-border cooperation. Meanwhile, China watchers, Note that the political movements in Xinjiang and in, in Tibet are as much the object of Beijing's foreign policy as Beijing's domestic uh, policy. And, and so are the anti-corruption campaigns uh, and the emergence of uh, property rights, of uh, now labor rights, uh, and other, uh, other rights uh, in China. In, in Burma, uh, the junta is still in place, but anti-government protests have erupted periodically, which raises hopes that are then dashed for uh, political change. Senator Webb spoke to us uh, yesterday about the elections uh, uh, in Burma uh, that are forthcoming. But there's no, there's no question but that a change in, in Burmese uh, politics would have an enormous uh, uh, foreign and security policy, set of foreign uh, security policy implications for the region. And finally, in Thailand, um, we, we notice uh, again, uh, as, as if we need further reminder that the Whiggish view of history uh, was wrong, uh, that democratization doesn't proceed in a, in, a, in, a, in a linear path. 
liberalizing tr transitions do not guarantee peace, uh, but they do portend the different sorts of diplomacy in the region. And so for a closer look at these dynamics, um, we are privileged to hear today from three scholars. Um, each is an inaugural uh, research associate in the NBR's national uh, research program. Uh, Dan Snyder uh, from Stanford, uh, Catherine Moon from Wellesley College, uh, and Anne-Marie Murphy from Seton Hall University. I'm going to introduce them each in turn, um, and I've asked them to speak for no more than 12 to 15 minutes in order to allow for a lively conversation uh, with, with you, uh, with the audience. Uh, Dan, uh, Dan Snyder is the Associate Director for Research at the Walter H. Shorenstein, Shorenstein Asia-Pacific Research Center at Stanford University. His research focuses on the regionalization, uh, on regionalization in, each, in East Asia, on historical memory issues, on security and foreign policy of Japan and Korea, and on U.S. Uh, national uh, and foreign uh, security policy uh, in Northeast Asia. He was a longtime foreign correspondent uh, uh, and uh, foreign affairs columnist for the San Jose uh, Mercury News. Uh, he covered Moscow and Tokyo for the Christian Science Monitor, and his next edited volume, which is due out shortly from Rutledge, is Divided Memories, History Textbooks and the Wars uh, in Asia. I, Dan is one of the keenest observers of contemporary Japanese politics. Uh, Kathy is Professor of Political Science and the Edith S. Wasserman Chair of Asian Studies at Wellesley College. She's very widely published on the subjects that concern us most directly uh, on the panel uh, today. How democratization and women's movements, migrant workers, human rights issues, domestic politics issues uh, shape and are shaped by foreign, foreign policy. She's the author of Sex Amongst Allies, Military Prostitution in U.S.-Korea Relations, uh, from Columbia University Press and is completing a book manuscript uh, for uh, University of California Press entitled Protesting America, Pursuing Democracy, Korean Civil Society and Alliance Politics. She's been a Fulbright uh, Senior Research Fellow in Korea, was a visiting scholar here at the Woodrow Wilson Center for International Scholars, uh, and has served in the Office of uh, Scholar Coordination uh, on, for women's issues, I'm sorry, Senior Coordinator uh, for, on women's issues in the State Department. Anne-Marie Murphy, finally, is, is the associate professor uh, in the Whitehead School of Diplomacy and International Relations at Seton Hall, and she's adjunct research scholar at the Weatherhead Center uh, at Columbia uh, University. Her research interests include political development in Southeast Asia, international relations uh, in Asia, U.S. foreign policy toward the countries uh, of Southeast Asia. She's lectured at the Foreign Service Institute. She's been a visiting scholar at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Jakarta and at the Institute for Security and International Studies in Bangkok. Uh, she monitored Indonesia's first direct presidential elections in 2004. It was a member of the Freedom House Ratings Team and the Council on Foreign Relations uh, Indonesia Commission. Uh, we're delighted to have all three, and I'll just turn it to them, and we'll, we'll go down in that order. Uh, Dan, you're, you're up first. Well, first of all,